Here are two interactive birthday cards that are easy and fun to make. And I'll show you how to do that coming up next on Catherine Paper Art. So I am making a standard A2 card and it is going to be in the, uh, the horizontal position, the landscape position, not in the portrait. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and taken some cardstock pieces and I've cut them to a half inch wide which I'll be doubling over to make the four bars from because you want to use sturdy bars um, to make this uh, to make this so that it works so I took my pieces my strips of cardstock and I rounded the ends using a corner rounder. Um, I didn't do that on this end because this will be the pull tab. So the one thing to keep in mind is that you need to make sure you leave enough room for foam tape uh, because you'll be you'll you'll need to use foam tape to pop up the card panel to make room for the movement. And it'll be, for mine, for my card, is going to be something like this. And the measurements that I used are five and a quarter for the pull tab, three and a quarter for the horizontal connect, and then the vertical uprights are two inches. Now we need to um, place uh, uh, holes, poke holes for the brads, because that's how they'll connect. And uh, you want to make sure that you get them the same placement on each, uh, for each hole. Otherwise it's not going to operate properly. It'll look wonky when it goes up and down back and forth. It kind of has a back and forth up and down motion. So um, <laughs> that's how it'll work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a hole. I'm going to place three holes on this on these vertical uprights. The two that I've put in right now are to connect to the four bar system and then the third center hole is going to be where we'll um, place the brad to connect it to the card panel. So these are the holes that we have. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and make them bigger and I'll do the same here and I'll be right back. So when you get it all together, this is what it should look like and this is how it moves. Now to place it on the card panel is a little bit of guesswork, but you want to have it collapsed. Um, this is the inside position so that when it opens up this is going to pull outside that way and it'll retract when you pull it in as I said it's a little bit of guesswork as to where the placement really goes But I'm, I'd say I'm probably about an inch in. So, I don't know if you can see that. 
and there's really no point to tell you an exact measurement because unless you make your now you can see that's <laughs> already a problem uh, I moved it up about a quarter inch and the way I tested it was I just held this in place and opened it to see how low it would go down here. The range of motion is what, however wide you want to make it, but you want to make sure you leave room for tape. So anyway, that's how that'll be. And I'll just show you real quick. Now, this will be covered anyway, so you're not gonna see any of this, and it doesn't matter that there's extra holes here. Like I said, they won't show. So, it'll move like this. I'll, I'll use my circle punch to make a thumb, a thumb catch, the thumb hole there, whatever you call it. So it's a good range of motion there, and I'll probably, probably do it like that maybe, give myself a little more room for tape, trim this off, and then use a half circle to be able to grip that. I'm ready to glue my card panel onto the card base. So I doubled up my panel here, and now I need to mark out my taping zone, because I want to make sure I don't tape anywhere that is going to impede the movement of my locking mechanism here. So oh, we're having lighting issues, by the way. That's why it looks so poor on the video. I'm sorry about that. Can't really do anything about it. Uh, but so these areas are going to be the locations where I can safely put my tape and because you got to use double stick tape to hold up your card panel your, your your any of this kind of decorative And again, you want to be able to keep this movement free. So I'll go ahead and add my double stick tape and I'll be right back. So I've gone ahead and taped my card and I've made sure that I can still operate my mechanism. So no tape will Im impede the movement. And then I can put my panel on but before I put the panel on, I need to locate my magnets for my heavy equipment. And to do that, I just want to place, decide where I am going to put my equipment. So I will put it somehow, something sort of like this. It'll be something like this. So I will go ahead and locate my magnets and I'll be right back. You want to make sure you just go over your tape with a powder tool just so you don't have any problems with anything sticking where it shouldn't stick. 
and make sure your magnets are totally secure because once you glue this down that's pretty much it unless you want to go through the effort of trying to get it off and if you do have to go through the effort of trying to get it off i recommend recommend undo <laughs> that works for tape only not for glue anyway i'll be right back so here's the finished card and i switched out uh, one of the dumps for the cement mixer and it operates very smoothly And on the inside, I have uh, just planned to put a simple happy birthday. And I have an extra excavator, which I will glue in next to the happy birthday sentiment, which I did that on my son's card. This is the second card that I've made. Um, the first card I made for my son as he celebrated his eighth birthday. The stamps are a bit juvenile for him, but um, because I bought them a long time ago, he liked them when he was little. <laughs> he still likes them, but uh, he agreed they are a bit juvenile. But anyway, um, this is what it would look like on the inside for this one. So that's the finished card here. In this next example, I'm using the um, stamp set from my favorite things called Up in the Air. And I borrowed a little kitten from Lawn Fawn's Wheelie Great Day. And I'm using, tentatively going to use the um, stitched hillside border from um, Lawn Fawn, if I can make it work one of them but um well i will make it work so i've got my component laid out and um i'm looking at doing something like this something of this nature anyway and um so if you only use one magnet on an item it's going to spin around and I don't really want the balloons to spin around, otherwise the elephant would fly out. But um, so to, I can change that by um, putting another set of magnets on the next brad and, and adjusting the height of where I want it to to be. And I'll I'll put my little bird back. But so it'll be something along the lines of this. Whoops. So I don't don't have my magnets glued in place yet, so they're not going to stay put. But so it'll be something like this anyway, and you you get the idea. So um, I'll go ahead and cut out a new overlay, and I'll be right back. So again, I'm going to just trace out my tapable area. So um, the double stick foam tape so that I know where it's safe to put the tape and where it's not. So here's the finished card number two using the My Favorite Things up in the air. And I think it came out pretty cute. I was going to have the birds on uh, the magnets also, but they would just turn around in circles because they're so small. So I opted just to put them on with a foam dot. And here's the first card. And uh, I, hope you, I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.